Hey all back with another Spotlight with Context. This time we are looking at Screen, the latest symbiote to come to the contest. I'm just going to jump right into the champion attributes here. We've got 3.5 in survivability. This I think is very fair. Scream herself is relatively fragile in some ways, but she has access to a pretty reliable auto block and through her sig some very reliable healing that really adds up over time. You're going to feel fine as long as you're playing her well. Damage of 4. There are characters that are more explosive, there are characters that ramp higher, but Scream is in a really good spot where a 3-bar loop is going to kill most things in Battlegrounds, and she doesn't like fully run out the way that somebody like Viv does. It's not that hard to extend her reach to other kinds of health pools. She has access to some really good damage, and most of it is either in the form of crits or direct damage. So it's somewhat difficult to block it out. Ease of use 3. There are some things to manage and juggle in this kit. She is a symbiote, and so she shares some of that with Venom and Carnage in particular, where things kind of rotate around and you need to chase certain kinds of utility. But it's not that hard, and she does intentionally line up pretty well once you understand her to just kind of go special 1, special 2, and then the opponent goes boom. So middle of the road, pretty fair. Utility of 3.5, there's a fair amount here. The biggest thing is probably the anti-armor clause in her SIG that we'll get to, but there is also some really reliable undermine, some auto block. Yeah, we'll go over it as we go, but there's a lot of very relevant utility in here that answers a lot of annoying tech threats. And then defender strength of 3. Once you've learned how to fight screen pro Scream properly, you have all of her evades and stuff down on a neutral mode, she's pretty darn easy, I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> if you don't have her fully down, or if there's anything about the node that is making her more difficult, she can get out of hand in a hurry. Now, I think 3 is still kind of the ceiling, because if you bring any of a number of counters, you're fine, but I can definitely see her meta to meta catching people on defense and battlegrounds. So getting into strengths and weaknesses, we start off with buff versatility. Scream has access to a lot of unique buffs. Some of them are a little on the rarer side, but in general she can get a lot of them up and keep them up, which is good for a variety of nodes, makes her an excellent warlock counter, etc. Resilience, we talked earlier about this, this is basically the survivability point, but between her auto block and her regen, and her bulwark, there are just a number of things that keep her healthy throughout the fight as long as you chase them down and manage them okay. And then we talked a bit about this as well. Scream's signature ability allows her to reduce the ability accuracy of armor up effects, same as Gladiator, and she also has very frequent armor breaks, so she can turn off a whole host of armor abilities. Now, weaknesses. I would kind of put her in a bit of the Kate Bishop category as far as how she interacts with immunities, right? If somebody is immune to Cold Snap with Kate, you can use Caltrops, vice versa. You only really run into a hard damage lockout when your opponent is immune to both of them, somebody like Warlock. It's kind of the same for Scream. If your opponent is immune to bleed, you'll get more armor breaks, you'll be fine. If your opponent is immune to armor breaks, you still have that bleed to ramp you up. But if they're immune to both, like, say, Colossus, you're basically going to be stonewalled. So keep an eye out for those when you are using Scream, and if you are worried about drafting against her, then pay special attention to characters that can answer both of those. Scream is a cosmic and a symbiote, so additionally, most of her kit does revolve around buffs. If you lose the buffs, you're going to have more of a problem. And then power control, we'll get to that as we go, but there is a bit of tempo necessary to her playstyle, and so anything that shuts her down too much is going to hurt that. Getting into the abilities themselves, we start out with Rip and Hair. There's a lot of flavor in here, gotta love it. 
Um, but all hits have a 25% chance to inflict a bleed debuff. These last for 10 seconds, so if you run max deep wounds, you get 12 and a half seconds. Reminder that that also is going to give you 25% more damage because that is how the duration increase on deep wounds affects the listed damage here, just for those of y'all who haven't run into that before. When the opponent is inflicted with a personal bleed, which note means that the bleed does have to successfully land, you also inflict an armor break for 10 seconds, and then this also benefits from deep wounds, so you get an extra flat half second for each rank there. And then if a personal bleed is prevented by immunity, note, not by ability accuracy, specifically by immunity, then inflict two armor breaks. So most of the time, whenever this check succeeds and you have that chance to apply it, whether they're immune to bleed or not, you're probably getting two debuffs and they're going to last the same amount of time because they both benefit from deep wounds. This also means that Scream has excellent uptime on the effects of despair and inequity because you usually have six or seven debuffs or way more on the opponent. Next up, we talk about Madness passives. These stack up to eight and she starts each fight with four. So Madness is somewhat similar to Viv Vision Solar Energy where the timer on the effect itself also serves as your timer for when the next one is gained. Either way, the timer expires naturally or Scream lands her fourth light attack, you're going to get two more, so it builds pretty quickly. But you do want to understand how that is going to happen. The first madness lasts for 18 seconds, and then each additional madness increases the expiry rate by 20%. This means that if you have the full eight madness, then they are expiring every seven and a half seconds. We'll get to why that matters in a second. Madness is paused for half a second when the opponent is struck by a basic and is paused indefinitely during the opponent's special attacks or during strikers. So Madness can rotate during Scream's own specials, which is sometimes pretty important, right? But you do have ways of slowing it down and making sure it doesn't rotate, doesn't expire, giving you time to throw in your combo enders you may want to even hold on to your striker with Scream for that purpose. At six or more madness, the opponent's stun debuffs suffer 100% reduced ability accuracy, which can become really important on defense. It's nice in general, but on defense, if you can't stun Scream, then she's going to throw her heavy attack more often, and we'll get to why that's a problem later. When knocked down by a special attack, when a personal buff is nullified, or when incinerated by a Mystic Champion, Scream loses two madness. So if you want to control madness, if you want to make sure that your stun debuffs land, if you want to make sure that she isn't gaining the other effects, then any of those three triggers are fine, right? Frequent special attacks, nullify, or incinerate specifically from Mystics, such as Longshot. And then if madness falls to zero, she gains another one after nine seconds. So here we are going to see why Madness rotating and why it rotating faster matters, right? So whenever Madness is refreshed, its icon is going to change on the HUD to reflect the currently selected hybrid buff. And that cycles through Scream's various hybrid buffs in this order. First Vicious, then Energize, then Bulwark, then Impact. If you want to remember this, the acronym is VEBI, which is only helpful because it used to be VIBE, but the gameplay worked out better this way. So do with that what you will. But as a reminder, Vicious makes your damaging debuff stronger, so that's going to help your bleeds. Energize increases your combat power, so you're going to build power more quickly by hitting the opponent or being hit. Bulwark increases block proficiency, and Impact increases block penetration. So that last one is going to be more defensive, especially if Scream is turning off stuns, but the others are all pretty nice on offense. I think you can kind of already see where this is going, where the selected hybrid buff is going to matter for what buffs you actually get up when, similar to with Carnage. So that is why you care about Madness rotating, just to really put a fine point on it. Hybrid buffs can only be gained while you have Madness. 
either champion's second medium attack grants screen the currently selected hybrid buff, right? So if you're fighting against her with a non-mystic, you're going to want to be a little bit careful about which buffs you give her access to. But this also means that mystics handle her quite well, because you can give her a buff that you can then nullify or otherwise benefit from. Whenever Scream gains a hybrid buff, and she has two of the currently selected one, Madness is refreshed instead, which, remember, also cycles it to the next one. That can be really important to your gameplay. And then while she is at two stacks of any hybrid buff, when Scream would gain one, she also gains a non-stacking Undermine for five seconds. As an attacker, this Undermine is paused during the opponent's special attack, so you have better uptime on it. So to recap before we move on too much further, because this sounds a bit denser than it is, Madness is going to tick up over time if you feel like you need access to more madness to turn into buffs and other things, then you want to end your combos with light attacks. The more madness you stack, the faster it will expire, the faster it will rotate through the various um, hybrid buffs, and then when you actually want to cash in on the hybrid buffs, you're going to want to use your medium enders. Now remember, Madness does pause while you're attacking with basics, so you do have some ability to control this. But paying attention to when you want to use light attacks to move through the selected buff, and when you want to use medium enders to actually activate the selected buff, is a really big part of Scream's kit. It's kind of the core of it, right? And then if you're in a matchup where auto block is at all a threat, you want to pay extra attention to making sure you get two of the same hybrid buff up right away so that you can get that undermine and blast right through that auto block. So let's talk about Scream's auto block. Whenever Madness is consumed by Scream, she gains a non-stacking auto block buff for five seconds that is removed when she auto blocks a contact attack. One thing to note here is that gaining a hybrid buff above does not count as consuming madness. I don't know if I need to say that, but I do remember when I was testing her, my brain at one point tried to link those two because we often consume resources to ramp our kits. And that is true for Scream, but not specifically for the hybrid buffs. So I just want to say it out loud in case anybody else starts trying to connect those when they aren't. But there are other places where Madness is consumed, and anywhere that happens, Scream gets an autoblock buff. So, this autoblock buff grants a 100% chance to autoblock any basic attack. These count as well-timed blocks and have a 100% chance to resist a block break by a heavy attack. Because reminder, heavy attacks are basics, and you can't just blast through her auto-block buff by spamming heavies. When Scream successfully auto-blocks an attack, she gains one of the currently selected hybrid buff and inflicts a personal bleed. That also helps you understand why hybrid buffs don't consume madness, because then this right here would be an infinite loop, just to help anyone else who still is confused by that. Maybe it's just me. But moving on to heavy attacks. Charging a heavy attack consumes one madness to inflict a 30% infuriate debuff for five seconds. Reminder, the 30% part of infuriate is a reduction of the opponent's offensive ability accuracy, fairly mild, this infuriate, like any other infuriate, will make them more aggressive by the same amount they're going to be more likely to charge at you. And then you're more likely to auto block because when you consume a madness, you get that auto block buff, right? So, this is the primary way that you're going to access that auto block on um, offense. A defending scream attack, you just generally don't want her to throw her heavy attack, right? Not unless you have a special active, but that's what I said earlier. If Scream does turn off your parry stun by getting to six or more madness, and then she's more likely to throw her heavy attacks, then she's more likely to get her auto block up, which you cannot get through with heavies, and you're going to need to make sure you have specials up. 
Mystics are generally good at that. This isn't that difficult to get around. Any Cosmic with anti-autoblock tech is going to be okay as well. But you want to make sure that you do have an answer to her auto block because if you don't, you're going to get parry stunned because it counts as a well-timed block and you're going to get bled. So play around that carefully. If you can avoid her throwing heavies, you should. Now special attacks in general, during scream special attacks, all personal debuffs on the opponent and all personal buffs, other than regen, we'll get to that, on scream are paused. So in general, while you're in your specials, you don't have to worry about things falling off. That's gonna be very important in a minute. Special one on activation, you gain attack rating for each unique buff on scream for the duration of this attack. So reminder, that's going to be up to four of your hybrid buffs. You're also going to have access to your auto block buff. We've already talked about regen. You can gain a fair amount of attack rating off of this. Each hit in the special one, which is three hits, that's important, consumes one madness to grant Scream a 100% fervor buff for 20 seconds. As a reminder, fervor increases the ability accuracy of damaging debuffs, which means that when you have three of these and you're increasing the ability accuracy of your dots by 300%, that 25% chance to bleed that Scream has becomes a 100% chance. So you want all three of these fervors. You want three madness when you throw the special one, you want all three fervors, because then you're just stacking a bunch of bleeds and or armor breaks for 20 seconds. If any hit in this special lands while Scream has zero madness, then she switches over to gaining madness for the rest of the attack and doesn't gain any more fervor. So you can use it to ramp that way, right? If you were getting close to a special two, you didn't feel ready for it, you could throw a special one, even if you had no madness, it would give you some madness, then you could throw another special one to get your fervors. So there is some flexibility there, just calling that out. And then as a reminder, this special one does count as consuming madness for the purposes of Scream's auto block. So if you get hit by this, remember she's going to get her auto block buff back off and wait. Now, that also means that if you're backing off and waiting, she might be more likely to throw a heavy attack, so I recommend you don't get hit by this special attack. It's not that difficult of a dex, but spend some time learning it. For the special two, on activation, consume all madness. So, of course, anytime she throws the special two, as long as she has even one madness, she's going to get that auto block buff up. If four or more madness were consumed, she also gains an unblockable buff for the duration of this attack. And then on each of the final four hits, which are going to be hairsprays, she deals a burst of direct damage for each personal debuff on the opponent, right? So for every bleed and every armor break you've landed, which can potentially be quite a few, you deal a burst of direct damage. I'm going to skip ahead and note that this is up to a maximum of 30 debuffs. It's not that difficult to get to 30 debuffs, so you can definitely do this, but you're gonna want fervors to get there. So that's why I said earlier, special one into special two is generally how she kills. And then the potency of these bursts increases by 8% for each madness consumed during this attack. So reminder, she can have up to eight madness. That means that the bursts can be up to 64% stronger. So, again, what you're hoping to do with Scream is get up a few hybrid buffs early on, throw the special one with three madness, and then try to get as many madness as possible while being aggressive and stacking your bleeds and armor breaks so that you can throw the special two with as much madness as possible and with as many debuffs on the opponent as possible. In a short fight, you don't need to agonize over getting back to 8 Madness. That boost is nice, but remember it is only 8%. You don't want to disrupt the tempo of the rest of your fight to get that last little bit for the most part. But I want to call out that that's generally how you're going to play this, is medium enders early on because the Vicious makes the bleeds better, the Energize makes it easier to run through your specials. Those are the two that I generally focus on for short fights. Then you switch to Light Enders and basically only do that because you want as much madness as possible.
And then last we have the special three, which gives you up to all eight madness and up to two of each hybrid buff. So just max ramp for throwing the special three. Boom, you're there. Then until the end of Scream's next special attack, abilities that consume madness don't consume madness, but still give their effects, right? So that means that if you throw the special three and get fully charged this way, you can then throw the special one, get your three fervors, but not lose any madness so you don't have to worry about getting it back in time to throw the special two. If you already have enough bleeds or armor breaks, you can also just run right to the special two and throw it with eight madness and not lose any madness so that you can then throw another special two. Depending on the tempo of the fight, you might still have all 30 debuffs. That could very easily be worth it, but something to kind of clock as you go. So for signature ability, Bad Hair Day, whenever Madness is consumed by Scream, she has a up to 75% chance to gain a regen buff, healing 3% of missing health over 5 seconds. So 3% of missing health, not a ton, right? But this is boosted by recovery, and this happens every single time, potentially, that Scream consumes Madness. So that means that you can get three on the special one, you can get one by just throwing your heavy, you can get a bunch on the special two. These regens show up a lot if you have Scream at max sig, and they really do add up. So I don't underestimate her healing. Against Spider-Verse heroes in particular, each stack of Madness reduces the opponent's evade ability accuracy by 25%. Reminder, you start with four, so you can start by shutting down evade. Against Symbiote specifically, Scream has an up to 25% chance to gain an extra Madness every time she gains Madness for each stack of Madness. <laughs> so as long as you have that four Madness, you are guaranteed another one when you gain them. So this basically just means against symbiotes, you're going to ramp significantly faster. As long as you don't drop down to zero, you're going to get three madness almost every time you gain any instead of two, and it's going to be much, much easier to stay up at your cap. It also means that your hybrid buffs are going to be cycling more frequently. It's going to be a little bit harder to control the kit very thematic when you're going up against your crazy symbiote relatives. And then against tech champions in particular, each stack of madness reduces the opponent's armor up ability accuracy by 25%. Again, you start with four. So like Gladiator, if you have Scream at max sig, this just shuts off armor up buffs and passives as long as they aren't chance locked. So yes, as with Gladiator, this means that you can enter a fight against Red Skull or Viv Vision, and they won't have any armor ups. Getting into our synergies. Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow with Medusa. Appreciate all of these uh, names. Whenever Scream successfully auto-blocks, but it has to be her auto-block, she gets an additional copy of the currently selected hybrid buff. Reminder that that just means you automatically get the undermine, because you're going to get to two, so that's very helpful there. And for Medusa, whenever a personal armor shattered effect ends, she inflicts an armor break for each personal fury buff. This does mean that if you have Medusa at six furies, you just get armor shattered back. Even if you don't, if you're sitting at three, you're halfway there, you can throw a special one, you're good to go. This is just a big quality of life to Medusa if she's in a fight where keeping the armor shattered is difficult. Silence and Misery with Carnage and Anti-Venom. For Scream and Carnage, each unique personal debuff on the opponent reduces their defensive combat power rate by 10%. So for both of them, that's their bleeds, their auto blocks. If you have both up, then you're good to go. You're going to have a better reduction. But it is looking for unique personal debuffs. This doesn't completely shut off their combat power if you have 12 bleeds. And then for Anti-Venom, Accelerated Mutation Passives and Evolved Mutation Passives gain 20% duration. As a reminder, those are the passives that just generally make his kit work better on his Special 1 and Special 3, respectively. The Munchies with Morbius, Storm, and Moon Knight. 
For Scream and Morbius, when you have a personal fervor active, basic attacks get extra critical rating for each living champion. Note that that can be a pretty healthy amount of critical rating when you have all four of these characters. For Storm and Moon Knight, while the opponent is suffering from a personal damaging effect, so Storm shocks, Moon Knight's bleeds, basic attacks gain critical rating for each living synergy champion. Same ceiling, quite a bit of critical rating on the table. Bloody Marys with Wolverine X-23, Squirrel Girl, Jabari Panther, Black Cat, and White Tiger are women who bleed. There's the idea. All champions, including those not listed here, just as a reminder, because this is a generic synergy with a fancy name, get increased bleed potency. I answer with a Scream is a rival synergy with Null, Symbiote Supreme, Venom the Duck, and Venom Pool, gives everybody critical damage. And then Separation Anxiety is Fancy Family with Agent Venom, Spider-Man Symbiote, Venom, Carnage, and Red Goblin. I've already mentioned Deep Wounds, and Equity and Despair in this video, so I think it follows those are the masteries I would generally recommend for her. And then use the Venom Relic. The Scream was built to work very well with the Venom Relic. Which Venom Relic you throw on her is up to you. Um, depends on if you have a big Venom, what the various Awakened Innates are and all that. Doesn't matter, but in general, the Venom Relic works really, really well with her. She has bleeds, she likes crits, she has a lot of unique buffs. Do that. But yeah, that's Scream. I just want to say, I wasn't her designer, right? But in general, building a symbiote for this game at this point is very difficult. You have a long history of abilities with Venom, Carnage, Venom Pool, Symbiote Supreme, Symbiote Spider-Man. There's a lot, Venom the Duck for that matter, he does have Symbiote-ish abilities. There's a lot of expectations attached to this and making a new Symbiote feel special is really, really difficult. I do think Scream does that. She's a lot of fun to play. I feel like she kind of has a sweet spot there as far as how she ramps, how her regen works, what utility she has access to, what her damage payout looks like in short, medium fights. She's a lot of fun, and I really do think she adds something to the class and to this kind of corner of the battle realm. Try her out. Let me know what you think, what you're thinking in the comments. And until next time, thank you so much for watching, and take care.